newest products on the market is Pulsar's HD38S thermal imager. It really is the bee's knees and it replaces the Pulsar HD38. Paul from Scott Countries with me again. Paul, what's the difference between the 38S and the older model? Well, initially, probably most importantly to consumers, the HD38S is a thousand pounds cheaper. Um, it's come down in cost. The reason being is the microbolometer inside is now, instead of being outsourced from an outside company, Pulsar now make it in, in house. Okay. Um, the, the lens has changed. Germanium is an element which is a very expensive element. The lens has got smaller because it is also shaped differently. Okay. Um, it's a new, specially designed lens which gives the same performance but, but at less cost. There's also a lot of electrical improvements as well. Tell me about some of the new features that this has got over the older model as well. Okay, um, it has um, the, the same digital zoom. You get 2.1 times optical zoom with push button digital zoom. Handy. You have the push button black hot, push button white hot. So you will see the heat source appearing as a white heat source or as a black heat source. Um, calibration, before you, with the device, you had to manually calibrate the yeah. device. What that means is if you're um, in a warm bird hide, you know, you're viewing geese outside the, the bird hide and you then go outside to film foxes, the, the ambient temperature is a lot colder, you need to calibrate the device. So you'd have to press the button and wait for the device to calibrate. The device now automatically calibrates. Okay. You can also turn that to manual if you still want to prefer manual, but it makes it a lot easier to use. So in the footage, I know people can see this now while we're talking, that, that slight pause, that's just the calibration, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah. the, it's the device essentially looking at its surroundings, calibrating the microbolometer inside so it gives you the best heat against cold detection. What about battery life? Uh, and power wise what, what would you um, still again you'll get up to 10 hours on an EPS steel lithium battery you'll see this is the lithium battery plugged in yeah. you can still use AA batteries inside I, personally I find it quite power hungry the AA mm -hmm. batteries tend to run down quite quickly you'd certainly need to replace them in an evening walk so. yeah it's one, one thing to remember with thermal images like this you really need to have the battery packs attached to it what type of I know you've got game hunters and, and people involved in the wildlife industry what other industries would use thermal images there's, there's vast applications for it, from uh, industrial use for um, people doing surveys in buildings, checking for heat soak coming out of roofs, checking on insulations. If people have problems with structures where there's, there's leaks, you can, you can see where heat's been lost from there. Security and surveillance, yeah. um, a, a lot of governments are using them now for, for covert surveillance where you can, you can look across a river bank, if there's someone you suspect is poaching, you can pick up heat sources where with traditional night vision you'd never see. And just in relation to the security applications that the thermal imager can be used for, you'll notice that Paul's got a small black box attached to his jacket with a couple of wires coming out. Paul, what's that? It's a Yukon MPR. Um, it's essentially a mobile personal recorder. So you you have a little screen in here which you can play back footage. So if, if we're out in the field, for example, I can hand you this and you can watch what's happening through the thermal imager. So you, I do for safaris, for example, if mm. people, are, people are watching wildlife, you can both look and see what the person's seeing. You can also record footage. So whether you're doing it for a security aspect or as we do for wildlife watching, you can record what you see and then upload it to YouTube or view it at home. Uh, Nice and simple, folks, because it just goes onto an SD memory card. Another thing I've noticed with the thermal imager, it can be attached to a tripod. Yep, yep there's yeah. a tripod mount there, so you can attach it onto a tripod. Um, you can have a video out going to a, a monitor. Yep. Um, there's also a couple of different modes in this, if you like, with a couple yeah, of modes. Yeah, sure. Well, so. yep. um, before, you had your standard white hot and black hot. Now you have um, a city mode for, for urban use. You have a forest mode for in, in forest and, and yeah, dense yeah. woodland. Um, and you have a high intensity mode. Now, a high intensity mode picks out a heat source. So if you have a lot of gorse or dense bush and you have a small object you're trying to spot, it'll show the heat source as a very bright um, source. That's ideal for people, for example, with vermin control, trying to spot a rabbit that's gone right in. Yep, they need to Absolutely. get the rabbit, that's yeah. it. Well, it, it looks like an awesome bit of kit and uh, we'll be seeing a lot more of this on the night vision show, but it's it's absolutely brand new on the, in, in, on the market and it's the uh, HD38S from Pulsar and it's available from Scott Country.